Howdy! Um, been reading again. Uh, so I got through a load of stuff for school, as I think I probably said in the last video. All sorted. Um, and therefore I treated myself to this book, which I'll level with you, right? This is The Shadow in the Glass by Justin Richardson, Stephen Cobb. Now, when I decided to read this one, I had a couple of Colin Baker books on the shelf. Uh, I had another one lined up and then I realised I got this one. Now, I can't remember where I got this book. It's just there. And honestly, I'm not being funny, and I'm certainly not disparaging history, but <laughs> my thought process went, Hitler, lol, read that. Obviously, I'm, I don't want to be rude. But to this day, I know the, the series has done Hitler now, right? But I've been really thinking very hard about why I found it quite incongruous that there's Hitler on a book with Colin Baker. There, you see. And this, this kind of makes me feel or it has made me feel, slightly uncomfortable, slightly incongruous, just sort of like something a little bit off with this, lads. Um, is this really what we're doing? And then I thought, well, why, what happened when Matt Smith met Hiller? Why was that different? And I think the reason being that when we had Let's Kill Hitler, we weren't really doing Hitler. What we were doing was... Um, the paradox thing, not the paradox thing, the, the moral quandary, if you could go back and kill Hitler. That's what that's, what that's about. And, and, you know, it's almost a meme, is it? I don't know. Is it a meme? Probably a meme. Um, but, of course, that sends the backdrop then for the whole River Song thing, which we've not even looked at in the Huathon, so there we go. And, of course, you get the added benefit of, like, 1940s German glamour and all that stuff. But it's not really doing Hitler. And then, obviously, Time Worm Exodus does Hitler... But I think I was a kid then, I didn't really appreciate... I'm looking for Libby coming up. I didn't really appreciate that doing Hitler in Dot 2... I mean, I suppose that, that was off the back of the whole Virgin New Adventures, too broad for the small screen, too grown up for you adolescent spotty kids. But as a mature, more mature person now, doing Hitler in Classic Who just feels a bit weird. So anyway, it was a lol Hitler moment, and I thought, well, let's go for it. With my, my newly discovered love for Colin Baker, let's do this. I've got to tell you, in this spate of Doctor Who books, what I have been reading, having done, what did I do for Davison? I can't remember what I did for Davison. Oh, I know. But having done, all, certainly done all the first five Doctors, this is the best Doctor Who book I've read of that lot. And it's one of the best Doctor Who books I've read ever, ever, ever. And I'm really surprised. And I'm really, really surprised. And the main, there are three factors here. First of all, the way that Justin Richards and Stephen Cole do Hitler in this book is absolutely brilliant. It is, now, careful of my words here, respectful to history, okay? There is nothing cheap or rude about it, which it could so easily have been, right? They treat um, uh, the presence of uh, uh, certainly what's generally considered to be the most evil man of the 20th century. There's a broad statement, argue about that as you see fit, but why bother? Um, uh, it, it, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a careful hand. And, and they've done the historical research and, and all that's bedded in there. And it's a Doctor Who story with Hitler in and it just works. And, and I am really surprised to say that. That is not what I felt would happen. I am genuinely impressed with the way these authors have managed that character in this daft universe of traveling around in a blue box and saying clever things. So, that's the first reason it's good. The next reason it's good is because the Brigadier's in it. And obviously the Brigadier never met Colin Baker. We know this. But this is, I mean, you know, in, in terms of what we've been looking at re you know, recently, this is the next visit uh, of uh, the Brigadier to uh, the programme since Mordrin and Dead. And there's a reference to him knowing Baker's doctor, but not knowing him really well. So we don't have to have that, oh, you've regenerated nonsense. Straight on with the action. And this is a brilliant brigadier. And this is a brilliant brigadier to sit between the nonsense that was Mordrin and, and Battlefield, which obviously we're going to see soon. This brigadier sits in that space beautifully and it's just fantastic. It, it, you really get a sense of Nicholas Courtney happening in front of you. And it's just so, so good. But the best thing about this book and it, this just, just compounded what, you know, the whole experience of watching them all in order has done. 
is this is exactly the sort of story that Colin Baker should have been given on television because the six doctors in this is unbelievable. It is really, really Colin Bakery, right? The performance, is that late? No, it's not. The, the, performance, the performance, whatever, of Colin Baker in this is off the chain, right? It's, you can hear Baker saying these lines. They've captured his voice absolutely fantastically. But his doctor shines in this. He gets to be heroic, brave, inventive. Um, at one point, spoilers, so apologies. I'm going to recommend you find this and read this, so, you know, whatever. But he gets dropped behind enemy lines <laughs> as a spy. And I totally dig into it. And then he meets Hitler, like, two or three times. And the way he deals with that is so brilliant. And there's even a reference to this sense of... The Doctor's sense of moral ambiguity creeping in. I was so certain of myself then, of my respect for the law of time, but now I'm, I'm being a bit more pragmatic about it. Oh, man. Where was, where was that to be... Why was Colin Maker not given stuff like that? Because I reckon he could have dealt with it. I really reckon that we could have seen, you know, a, a whole depth to the six Doctors that we didn't get to see. So I'm, I'm just... You know, it kills me that I look back in the... For, the, for often times, silliness of the Colin Baker season. And, like, I include stuff like um, Revelation of the Daleks in that because with the best will in the world, it's a good story. There's no two ways about it. But the sort of seriousness of it that, excuse my school library voice, grown-upness of it, I, I do hear that phrase, but I haven't got a better one, it's quite adolescent, really, isn't it? It's quite six for me. And, and I think the same goes for other bits and bats. I can't really honestly think of when Colin Baker gets an opportunity to be serious in the way that just to traverses. Certainly, we've seen McCoy having the opportunity to be a serious doctor. But if we go back to Davison, things like Kinder, things like Snake Dance, different takes on that level of seriousness without it getting all flipping guns and soldiers and running around and all that. So this is a, a version of a serious take on the Sixth Doctor, or a serious story for the Sixth Doctor to exist within, that facilitates the Sixth Doctor's brashness and his sort of uh, loudness, but it, 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 it can fit within that world. So it's yet another example of me being frustrated because I'm thinking, why could Colin Baker not have been given this to do? Just to give you a bit of overview, the plot's fun. really good, genuinely really good. And uh, and you get bits in, in uh, you know, we time behind me, all that stuff. Uh, you know, some quite compelling characters, you know, one in particular. But all the people around him, you know, all those shine through. Uh, the, the, the people that the ult have invented, uh, um, the alien menace, oh, it's just brilliant. Does what, you know, knew who will do at some point where you kind of feel, did you need this alien menace? Well, you did need the alien menace. I mean, you did, but but you realise that's not the real body here. Obviously, because it's bloody Hitler. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So the fact you created, you know, a, an alien threat that is a threat and in another story would be the main big bad. But in this, you realise, no, it's us, isn't it? It's the worst of humanity that's the real problem. So genuinely, people, listen, again... I don't even know why this is on my shelf. I can't remember buying it. I must... Did I buy it recently? There's no clues in it. I might do a bit of a, an email search and see which frenzied book buying this came from. But genuinely, go and get this book because it is proper good. I have had a really good time reading this book. No sense of... So often happens with me and a Doctor book. Oh, is that character or bugger it, just carry on, you know. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I haven't quite got this time. Away. Nonsense, don't care. This is great. Genuinely, genuinely great. Go and get this. So there we go. Right. We'll be back soon. I'm really going to try and convince to watch Greatest Show of the Galaxy 1. We'll be watching proper telly. What's all that about? Having said that, Jamie Norman for the next Doctor after a uh, shoot to get one. I'm putting my flag in the uh, sand for that, whatever. Right, bye-bye. <laughs>